I have a scenario for you, something I'm wondering what you would do. Let's say you had a dishwasher or a washing machine and it started making a weird sound. Maybe there were some lights that you hadn't seen before, it's blinking in a weird way. And you're like, what's going on with this? It's broken and I'm, you know, you're kind of annoyed by it. What would you do? Would you call someone right away, a small appliance repair person or a plumber or someone that could fix it for you? Or would you enroll in a technical institute and take a course on how to fix small appliances around the house? Or would you go onto YouTube, check to see if someone had a video on the exact model of appliance that you had to see if somebody had a video on the exact problem you were having and see if they had a solution for it? Chances are you'd go the YouTube route because that's what everybody does these days. Just the other day I had a friend visiting and their dishwasher was making a weird sound and it turned out that there was a little basket that they needed to remove from the bottom, clean it out and everything was fine. And I think there's a lot of reasons for this. The main reason I think is that in the old days information was guarded and hard to find. You had to have the manual, you had to have the service manuals. Now information is available. You can get information very quickly on channels like this one if you're interested in using technology to learn and teach more effectively or channels on car maintenance and dishwasher repair and gardening and all the things that you might want to do. And why, why am I talking about this today? Why am I sharing this with you? Because when we look at developing courses, when we look at developing any type of training or learning, we want to make sure that we're not just sharing information. We want to make sure that we're telling a story or a narrative and we're creating motivation for the person and the learner to develop their own skills in a way that's effective for them so that they can seek out the things that we create when they need them and when they're motivated to learn them. And if we're in a corporate environment, you know, motivation might be you get to keep your job. And if you're in a school environment, motivation might be that you need to learn something in order to be able to do something in the future. But no matter what we're doing our training for, it's really important that we're not just sharing information. That is like so 1990s. What we want to do is we want to create that, that narrative of the story. I, I'll even go so far as to use things like storytelling tactics in order to go through and, and create narratives and stories when I'm teaching. And one of the tools that I'll use a lot of times when I am teaching is what a lot of people use and that's PowerPoint. But the challenge that we have with PowerPoint is it's often an information dump. It's a slide with information, a slide with information, a slide with information. It's dull and boring and not that great. Well, one of my favorite tools that I use, and I've made other videos here on the channel about it, and they're sponsoring this video, is iSpring Suite. Because what it allows me to do is add so much more into PowerPoint. It allows me to create a narrative. It allows me to create quizzes and summative assessments. It allows me to create role plays and scenarios and all sorts of interaction and great things that are going to make a learner more engaged with the content and really learn more effectively. Now, the best part about iSpring is not only all these things that we can do with it and how robust it is, but we can then generate that into an online course so that the student can use that whenever they want at their own discretion. We can collect information on that. We could even put it into the, uh, the iSpring learning management system, which is a really good learning management system. Comment down below if you'd like me to create a video on iSpring's LMS. That's, that's a whole other subject. Well, one of the things that we can also do with iSpring that a lot of people don't think about is create content like the YouTube videos, like the social media posts that allow us to reach an audience that may then motivate them to go and do the online course. And speaking of online courses, this video is part of a new feature that YouTube has called courses. So I'll put a link down below for the entire course playlist or you can go and check out my channel page. You'll see that I have a tab called courses where you can see different courses that I have, which are a series of videos all around a certain topic. So this video is part of a course on using iSpring for content creation. 
I also have another iSpring course here on YouTube on using iSpring to support research-backed uh, study techniques. Now, this is a new feature that not every channel has. I'm very lucky that it's been enabled here on my channel. But by going through and, and watching these videos, you'll actually be able to get a badge of completion, plus you'll learn something new. And iSpring is a perfect match for this because what it allows me to do is create the content for the courses that I want to either host on my own LMS or now, in my case, right here on YouTube and potentially in the future, everyone will be able to use courses here on YouTube. So check it out. Now, iSpring has all of the features that I need in order to make this happen. When we want to create new content, we don't want to have to learn a whole bunch of new tools. The nice thing about iSpring is that within the PowerPoint environment, I'm going to be able to create my content with a familiar tool that just has a lot more functionality because of the iSpring suite. So with the content creation, we can do things like record audio, record video, including screen captures. We can do things like manage narration so I can narrate content. This is all perfect for when I want to create social media content. I can embed quizzes, interactions, and role plays. Those will be very useful if I walk through them and narrate them as part of a YouTube video, which can add a lot of variety to what I'm creating and make it much more engaging and exciting. I can do screen recordings, obviously very useful. I can embed YouTube into the PowerPoints, but generally this is going to be, an, I'm going to output this into a YouTube environment and lots of different elements that we can add to add a lot of variety to our presentations. We can go in and create different types of interactions. We can then even use the AI assistant to help us build our presentation. And that's going to allow us to create content much faster. And we can, once we've created the content, what we can do is we can actually take it and we can publish it and publish it directly out to YouTube. This makes iSpring an ideal solution for creating all sorts of content that I can then share across multiple different platforms, including YouTube. Using iSpring to create engaging content just makes sense. In the next video, I'll link it down below, you'll see how we can begin the process of creating content with iSpring. And if you click on the course link in the description, you can see all of the videos and soon be creating your own content using iSpring. Thank you so much for watching. I'm excited to see some of the great content that you create using iSpring. Let me know in the comments below how you plan to use iSpring and what type of content you plan to create for YouTube and other platforms.